In this lesson, we're going to be painting our largemouth bass skin mount. We're going to be using all lacquer base paints, Lifetone Gill Red, Jet Black, Golden Yellow, Semi-Transparent Green, Polytranspar Super Hide White, Blending Brown, Bone Super Fish Sealer, Master Gloss 2. We're going to be using a Pache H1 airbrush. We're also going to be using lacquer thinner. As you can see, we have a color cup set up and a color jar. We'll be using both of those for this process. We also have two brushes set up, one for cleaning off the eye and one for recreating scale detail. We'll be painting in a walk-in exhaust booth from Pache. This is a really safe way to do it. If you don't have a paint booth set up like this, you can paint in an open door of a garage or outside, but you want to make sure you have good ventilation when you're painting. You can also use a carbon filter mask. That's a very good idea. You can see we have a fish set up on a mounting paddle or a piece of wood to help hold it during the painting process. This is going to allow us to hold onto the fish without getting our hands on the drying paint and allow us to angle it in a lot of different positions. To start out, we're going to be using Gary Bowen's Super Fish Sealer. We're going to give the fish three coats. You want to let it dry about five minutes between coats, and each coat you give it can be a little bit heavier than the last. You don't want to put so much on that it's running though. After your third coat, you want to set it aside and let it dry for at least three to four hours before you start your next painting process. The first color we're going to be using is Polytranspar Blending Brown. Starting at the lip line, going around the eyes. What we're doing here is we're just trying to blend our epoxy to match the skin color. We don't want to get it too dark, but we don't want the light epoxy to come through either. We're also blending our tail fin repairs with our Blending Brown. Again, we're evening everything out. That's why they call it blending brown. And it works great for that. We're painting the back side of the fins where we put our heavier paper on. This is just to give it a more finished off look. We're painting around our wood block and we're painting some of the epoxy on the back side of the fish with our blending brown. Now we're angle spraying on our pectoral fin. Just cleaning up some of the areas that were a little discolored. Painting underneath the gill area. Now what we're doing is we're recreating the scale area around the eye with lacquer thinner on one of our brushes. We're just painting a scale shape on around the eye. When we put our other color paints on, this will blend it and make it look just like scales. Again, we're doing the same thing by the pectoral fin, and that's why we painted that area black brown. So we could go in and do our scale recreation with our brush. Again, when we put our yellows and our little hint of green over this, it's going to blend it right in. just painting on the very edge of those scales we recreated. Now we're going to take the first amount of paint off of our eye. Again, we're just using lacquer thinner on a brush. We want to take the paint off throughout the process so it doesn't all build up at the end. Otherwise it can be very hard to remove it when we finish painting and we run the risk of getting some of that lacquer thinner and paint on our finished paint job, which wouldn't be a good thing. So we clean it off between colors. I'm just repeating that process on the back eye. 
Again, you can see our paddle set up really good there. Now we're using super hide white and we're painting the interior of the mouth. We're basically painting the entire interior of the mouth with this white. We're also painting on the teeth. You don't have to get a lot of this back on the gill rakers though. It could actually spray out onto the show side of your fish. So you don't want to do that. Just keep it in the mouth. Now we're painting our gill cover and the gullet area on the fish. Again, that area that we have prepared with epoxy before all needs to be painted white. We're getting a little bit of that up onto the jaws. You don't want to completely paint those jaws white, but a little bit's fine. We're painting the underside of the gill cover and the throat latch area white. Now we're starting on the belly. I like to start on the back side first to get warmed up. You see I'm putting fairly light coats on as I'm doing this. I don't want to necessarily have a definite line where the belly starts and stops. You want it to fade into the rest of the fish. That's very important. So you don't want to make this a solid white line here. Just fade it up into the body and then we'll fade our yellows and other colors down into the belly so you don't have an exacting line. I'm not getting any of this on the fins. There's no need to white out any fins on this bass. I am lightening up the tail fin just a little bit and that's just from where I put some of my black brown on earlier. It was just a little bit darker than I wanted. I'm going to do the same thing with the soft dorsal. You wouldn't have to do this but it gives it a little bit lighter look. Now we have our golden yellow and I'm just painting the fins with that. The pelvic and the pectoral fins. Again, I'm not hammering it on there. I'm just putting enough on to start to change it towards that gold color. We're using transparent paints here. As you can see, as we're painting on the lower third of the bass. And we're just painting enough so you can see through all those vermiculations that are coming through very strong. We're not trying to uh, completely cover that area up. You want to see those vermiculations come through. We'll do a little bit on the back side as well. Do, up, do a little bit around the mandible area. Over the entire head is fine. And a little bit up around the eyes as well. You can see some of the green that comes through with this golden yellow. And we'll be using some of that throughout the process. It has green in it. You can see that on that soft dorsal. Now we're using transparent medium green. You want to go fairly light with this. You don't need as much of this as you think. Starting on the back side. Now we're going to flip it over and work on the show side. We want to come down just a little bit past the lateral line and the center of the fish, fading into that yellow. Again, do not overdo this step. A little goes a long way. Once we get our final gloss coat on, it's really going to stick out. Again, we're spraying some over the entire face. Now we're using Gill Red. We're starting inside the mouth and we're painting the gill rakers and the esophagus area. We're putting a little bit on the face of the bass to give it kind of a flush look. And we're starting to paint the gills. Now we're putting some red into the fins. All of the fins will get a little bit of red. The anal fin, again, we're just, just misting it in. We don't want to overpower this. But just start turning it towards reddish orangish look. Again, same with the soft dorsal. And same with the tail fin. Just misting it over the fin. That's how we're achieving this look. 
a little bit at a time and then keep building it up. I'm going to go back into the gills again and we're going to get them painted again with our gill red. You're going to have some overspray on your white, that's fine. You want to try not to have that. We will go back and touch that up later. Again, the beauty of having a fish on a paddle like this is you can angle the fish and your airbrush hand at the same time you're painting. It really helps, especially when you're trying to paint these gills. Now we're starting on the back gills. If at any point when you're working and your airbrush is starting to spit, go ahead and take the time and clean it out with lacquer thinner. You might have some paint getting built up in the cone. Sometimes when you're trying to do intricate work like this, it can start to spit. That's especially common with white paint. Again, we have our PSI set for this airbrush at about 45 to 50. Sometimes if you turn it up a little bit, that can stop spitting. You can see where we're at so far. We have the yellow and the red in our blending brown in the fins. Coming back with our blending brown again, and we're just touching up that jawline. We're painting blending brown on the leading edge of the fins. It kind of defines them a little bit. Cleans up anything on those edges. You can see I'm angle spraying the, the caudal or tail fin. The reason we do that is it helps to highlight the uh, tail fin rays. It gives it a lot of depth. We do that from both sides. You really see it good in that shot. Again, same with the soft dorsal. Angle spraying is a great trick when it comes to painting fish fins. Now we're starting to paint on the very top of the bass with our blending brown. We're kind of looking for a mossy green look with this. You do not want to get too dark with a largemouth bass up here. That's why we're using blending brown and not jet black. And again, as you can see, we're just fading that down into the green. That's really all the more dark you want to get it. Maybe a little bit more touch up on our soft dorsal and on our anal fin. You, you, as you put this in different lights, you'll see a few things you need to touch up. So I like to take it outside even. Even though I have great lighting in my paint booth, you'll see things you don't see in the paint booth. Now we're grabbing our jet black. We're going to be painting the back seam jet black. You could paint this green and yellow just like the show side if you wanted to. It actually would be good practice. But because with this particular mount, the customer is never going to see it, we're just going to paint it black. But don't hesitate to practice back there before you do your show side work. Okay, we've got our super hide white back again and we're doing our final touch up on the inside of the mouth. Just cleaning up some of the overspray red and some of the overspray black brown from when we did the jaw work. Getting the tongue painted again. Again, you can see we're painting those teeth white. cleaning up the gullet area and the gill cover area. We had a little bit of red overspray there when we put our capillary action effect into the bottom part of the head, which you can still see nicely here. Again, same thing on the show side. You don't want to bring this white up too far onto that gill cover, just as you see it here. This can be fairly white under here where you're painting under the jaws and the gullet area. Now we're starting to clean up some of our red overspray from when we painted the gills. 
I mean, with this particular step, you might have to go back and forth between white and red a few times until you get the hang of it. Again, you can see we have a little bit of white that got sprayed into our gills again, so we'll have to come back with red. Now we're continuing our touch-up work on the rest of the bass's belly. This is just from overspray when we painted the fins. And you're always going to get a little bit of that. You can see that on the anal fin very clearly, so we're going to clean that up now. There's also always overspray around the pectoral fin a little bit, and especially around those two paired pelvic fins. You really want to try to control your airbrushing to avoid a lot of overspray. If you get overspray in the wrong spot, it can ruin the paint job. So just take your time as you're starting out painting this. We're moving relatively fast in this video because I want to show you just how fast this method is, but don't be afraid to slow down when you're working on it. We're just bringing that white up right to that transition line. Again, it's not a definite line. Very important with that. Okay, we're putting a little bit of white right behind the maxillary bone. It gives that area a little bit of depth. Doing the same thing on the back side, right between those maxillary and mandible bones. Just a hint of white in there. You don't want too much white. We're painting out some white right on the eye. And what that does, it gives it a milky white effect around the eye. So we'll be cleaning that white off, and we have a slight whited out effect around that eye. If you check out fish reference pictures, you'll see that. And just doing a little bit more touch-up work. Okay, we have our gill red back. And again, we're going in with our gill red and just touching up where our white overspray hit it. It's a little hard to see what I'm doing here. But I'm just painting those gill rakers red and I'm avoiding getting too much red on the white area underneath the gill cover. We're right by the Cleithrium right now. And moving down towards the throat latch. Again, you can keep adjusting the color cone tip on your airbrush to adjust the amount of flow. You want a fairly low flow for this area. If you have too much coming out at one time, it can overspray very easily. That's what's nice about a Pache H. They're an easy airbrush to use and adjust. Another thing to keep in mind is if you only have one airbrush, you want to make sure that you clean your airbrush out between every color. It might not be a bad idea to buy two or three airbrushes to start so you don't have to always clean as you go back and forth between the white and the red and let's say the black brown which is another real common color. Again we're doing the same thing on the back gills just cleaning up where we had some white overspray on our gill rakers. It pays to be meticulous with this step. You want it to be very neat and clean looking in there. You, if you hold it in different light angles, you'll see we have a little bit of white here and there. Okay, we've got our jet black back out. We're going to start working on the middle spot pattern on the bass. And the first thing I like to do is just draw a guideline. 
This is just jet black going right down the center of the fish. It starts where the clethrium bone junction is, where the two bones meet. We're right above the pectoral fin. We're not following the actual lateral line until we get down towards the end of the soft dorsal. We're going to do a practice run on a piece of white paper. The center line on the bass is made up of a lot of small spots. To put it simply, we're painting the edge of the scales with our jet black paint to create a larger spot area. So we have a large line of spots and then a smaller line of spots. As you can see, so it's large, small, large, small, large, small. Or small little dots in between the larger area of dots. And as you're doing this, you can slightly haze your spots a little bit. It doesn't hurt anything. It gives the uh, line somewhat of a haze look. There's a lot of different ways you can paint bass spots, and they do vary considerably between different bass. So look at your reference pictures. This particular spot pattern is the one we see most often at our shop. It's not a haze look, and it's not a real defined spot look. It's like a combination of the two. Painting a really good bass lateral line markings or center line markings is difficult to do. If you can master this, you can master just about anything in fish painting. Now we're going to put that same line on our fish, just like we did on the paper. See, we got started with it. Again, we had put that line down the center, and we're using that as our guideline. So it's a large cluster of spots, and then a little small cluster, and then a larger cluster. And as we move towards the tail or caudal region, they get progressively smaller. They're the largest right at the pectoral fin. And they also get a little bit closer together as you get near the caudal peduncle. They start really grouping up at the very end of the soft dorsal and the anal fin, as you can see from the picture here. We're just going back and cleaning up between our larger spot patterns to kind of tie it all together. You want to keep it fairly even. You can bring a few spots a little bit towards the belly and up towards the top if you feel you need to. You don't want to get overly wild with this pattern. They tend not to be that large as some people paint them. So you want to make it look pretty much like what we have here on our video. But again, always use your reference pictures. Just adjusting my airbrush a little bit and cleaning it out. You'll have to do that quite a bit when you're doing this spotting work. And again, I'm just coming through and just touching up in a few areas. If you pivot this thing in other lights, you'll see a few areas you need to clean up. Now we're going to put our barring on the face. We're following the edge of where the maxillary bone would be when the mouth is closed with the first set. The second set comes off the middle of the eye and comes down onto the gill cover a little bit. And the third one goes straight back across the entire gill cover. Again, we're just making a series of small dots to do this. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but I'll show it to you in a second. Now that we did that on the back side, we're ready to do the same thing on the show side. Also, you can see the vermiculations on the lower third of the bass came through very nicely. So we don't need to repaint those. You could paint those if they were missing or if you wanted to highlight them a little bit more. And again, you just would be painting the end of the scale when you do that. You want to keep those fairly light though, not as heavy as the rest of the bass, lateral line markings. And again, we're just doing that on the show side, the exact same way we did it on the back.
doing just a little touch up work with our jet black here. Now we're going to make the vermiculations on the back of the bass. Now these are just basically triangles. And I make them with spots and I don't come down that terribly far here. I'm just that I'm coming out of the darkened area we painted mossy green brown on the back of the fish. You don't want to drop these necessarily too far towards your middle markings on the bass. A little goes a long way with these. If your reference shows them coming down further towards the center of the fish, you can definitely do that, but I like to keep them fairly close to the top. flip it around so you can see what I did. See those golds and greens are coming through real nice on the face. Now we're going to use some lacquer thinner to clean the paint off the eyes. Again we're using our eye brush for doing that. While we're cleaning these eyes off I'm going to touch a little bit on scale tipping. Scale tipping is quite commonly done on largemouth bass. It really depends on your reference picture if you need to actually do it. Where most of the scale tipping is going to be occurring would be on the upper part of the bass or from the midsection up towards the dorsal area and on the face. Quite often bass don't exhibit a lot of scale tipping detail. If you just look at reference pictures of bass, they're often quite dark. If your bass doesn't need it, don't do it. Quite often it's overkilled on bass. You do not want to overkill it by scale tipping. As you can see from our bass here, the golds and the greens are coming through really nice. And with this particular bass, which was a little darker on the back, any scale tipping would be overkill. It would not be correct. So the wrap up on the scale tipping, only scale tip if you have to. Don't scale tip just because you can actually ruin a mount by doing too much scale tipping. You can see we're dabbing some on and off with our lacquer thinner as we're putting on. You don't want to put a lot of lacquer thinner on at one time. It could run down and ruin your paint job. So you just want to put enough lacquer thinner on your brush to start to clean the paint. Go back to your lacquer thinner container, dip it in, dip it on a paper towel, and then head back to the eye to clean some more. And we're going to repeat that process on the back eye. Okay, our bass is now completed. We're just going to give it a one once over just to make sure there isn't any overspray we missed. Now we're ready to gloss. Again, we're going to be using Master Gloss 2 for this. Your first coat should be light. This is just a tack down coat just to hold all your colors in place. You'll want to let this coat dry for a good 10 minutes before you come through with your next coat. We're on coat number two. You can go a little heavier with this. You want 100% coverage. Make sure you get underneath the gill covers really good around all the fins. Get the eyes coated really good. If it's very humid when you're doing this, uh, you could have some milking. That's why we use Master Gloss too. It's very easy to use in humid weather. But if it's very humid, you might want to avoid it until it clears off a little bit. And again, this is our third coat now in a much heavier coat. We're really putting the shine on. You can see those greens really pop out of there now. And our bass is completed. We've let it dry for a good six hours before we took this picture. Before you actually handle your bass to give it to your client or to put it on driftwood or a scene, you want to let it dry for at least a day or two so you don't get fingerprints.